We've discovered the 10 most powerful maneuvers to release fascia and feel good in your body. My name is Gary. My name is Cynthia. And I'm Jason. And we want to bring them to you. Let's get started. Let's learn how to live in the body that we were designed to live in, our fascia. Our bones, our muscles, our organs, and our tissue all float inside this vehicle of the body and fascia is the gel that supports and brings it all together. So let's just do a little test and let's see where fascia is tighter in our body. One of the key indicator points is right here in the palm of the hand. And what you want to do is you want to grab and pinch in here on the right hand and then you want to do it on the left hand. And one of them is going to be tighter. If, uh, if one of them is tighter, then what you want to do is we're going to come back and check this at the end. This is going to indicate a shift in our fascia and how we feel in the tension in our body. So first thing we're going to start off with, number one is called palate swipe. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take your right hand and your right foot. We're going to cross over. And you're going to take your left hand and put it over top on your shoulders right here. And what you're going to do is take your right hand and swipe across your palate of your mouth on the roof from molar to molar, releasing and coming back six times. So let's do it together. One, two, three, four, four. Okay, now we want to unwind. For me, immediately, my neck is a little bit looser, my hips are a little bit looser, I can feel that. And I just want to want you to move around in your body a little bit, uh, your shoulders, and then let's go back and test, okay? So let's test the palm of the hands. So I'm retesting both of them, and mine is looser, is yours looser? Yeah. Right side? Mm -hmm. My right side was tighter first. Right on. So we all have looser on the right side. Now if you have the left side, or if you don't feel a difference, that's okay. This is just one indicator so that you know that things are working. And if they aren't changing, it will change later on. So let's get started here. We're going to start with number two, which is totally twisted. One of the most powerful maneuvers, and it's the one we started everything off with. What we're gonna do to start off is bring in our spinal pelvic lock. And what we do is paste our belly button into the spine, pulling up the anus muscle and pulling in the bladder. So pulling everything up inside of you tight. This is gonna be hard to do at first. You're not gonna be able to do it right off the bat, but you'll get used to it as we go. And constantly as we're doing it, we're gonna remind you because your body's gonna shift, it's gonna change. So tightening it all up, pull it in. Now we're gonna take the right arm and the right foot and we're gonna step across, okay? The right arm I want you to put underneath the armpit for this maneuver. And the left arm coming across to the shoulder. And you're getting a good grip here. You wanna get a grip so that you can turn. And we're gonna make our first turn, but we're gonna turn our head to the right first. And we're gonna turn our body to the left. And it's super important to pull, turn the head to the right first to create pressure. And we're gonna stick our tongue in our left cheek, pushing out, and pushing out hard and breathe six times through our nose. So let's do it. So our, automatically my hips start to loosen up and my feet feel a little bit more flat on the ground. So wiggle your feet a little bit, wiggle your hips a little bit, let it loosen up, turn a little bit more to the right. And then what I want you to do is purse your lips like you're drawing air through a straw like sucking. And we're gonna draw air into the lungs and we're gonna pump them up just like a balloon. So hold it again, hold it again. And exhale slowly, letting the air fall. Bring it in again, hold it. Again, hold it, again, and exhale slowly, letting the air fall. We're not really blowing the air out. Tighten your hips a little bit. Turn your body to the right. Let's do it one more time. Again, again, and exhale slowly. Now what I want you to do is find a steady spot over your left shoulder with your eyes. Fix your eyes on it and look at that spot staring to reduce all of the input into the brain. 
And we're gonna breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth six times. So take your first deep breath in. And exhale all slowly and I feel it dropping as uh, right through my spine. Now there's different things that you wanna watch for here. A lot of times the hips are gonna sway out and if the hips sway out, you wanna bring them together. And it's hard and turning your head. It's really hard to actually notice if your hips are swaying out. And one of the ways that it will look when the hips are swaying out is it'll look like this, or the head will be like this. And that's okay. You're just gradually trying to bring it back into center. And you can see each and every person does it a little bit different. Let's turn a bit more over here. And that creases the, the torque, and we're always trying to turn a little bit, not too much. We're not forcing it, we're just giving a little bit of turn, and a little bit of turn to the head, and we're keeping that tension in there. That's great. So after the six breaths, what we're gonna do now, is we're going to come back to center, pull in your spinal pelvic block, pull that belly button in as a trigger, turn your head to the right, and turn your body all the way to the left. Okay, now this one here, I feel a lot more tension in my lower back on the right side, but tongue in the cheek, and I want you to feel the tension and see if it changes in six breaths. And find a hard spot in your cheek, like a part, spot that's got tension. For mine, it's in the front. If you're my age, there's a joke or two about this one, but we'll leave that out of the video. Okay, my hips are starting to adjust. My left leg just got a little looser. Okay, and it happens every time because we're always in flux. It's never static. Okay, now what we're gonna do is purse your lips again, like you're breathing through a straw. Sucking air into the lungs like a balloon. Filling up the balloon of your lungs. And exhale slowly. Pull in your spinal pelvic lock, pull it, your, your glutes up, turn a bit more, breathe in. More, and exhale slowly. Wiggle your feet a little bit, wiggle your hips a little bit, it kind of loosens stuff up, turn a bit more, breathe in through your mouth. Again, again. And exhale slowly. Now in through the nose and out through the mouth. I lost my balance there, see? <laughs> Fixing your eyes on a point over there. And if you can't maintain your balance, it's okay. You know, do the best you can. One of the things you can do is you can make your feet a little bit wider if you need to, like I'm doing right here. This allows you to maintain more balance but as you do this longer, you want to tighten up the feet. And what I do is I wiggle my toes to find that flat spot. I'm always trying to get my feet a little bit flatter on the ground. And as I do, I can tighten stuff up and turn a bit more. Keeping that constant tension to left. Okay, good. Now let's unwind. And when you unwind, we want to walk around. It's super important. Don't miss this. This is super important. We're going to walk around and just... Walk for about three minutes, and I want you to feel the changes in your body. So I feel initially a little tension in the front of my left hip, and my right hip feels like it's loosening up. Anything for you, Jay? The back of my left knee feels loose, and my right shoulder drop. Anything for you, Cynthia? Uh, yes, my left knee feels actually tight, and my hips feel loose. Okay, perfect. Let's go back in. It's perfect, uh, the, if you walk around, uh, we're walking in a circle for space, but I would, I would tend to walk in a straight line so you get more reference. Here we are for number two of uh, Totally Twisted. Let's pull in our spinal pelvic lock, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the left side. So we're gonna take our left hand and our left foot and we're gonna go over with the left hand underneath the armpit and the right hand on top. Now we're always gonna turn to the right to make it simple as our first part. So what we're gonna do is turn our head to the left, and then we turn our body to the right. And it's really important to do it in this order. It works way better if you do the head first and the body second. Okay, tongue into the cheek again for six breaths. And as, we do, as you're doing this with the tongue in the cheek, breathe deep. And what I want you to feel in the tongue, when the tongue's in the cheek, I want you to feel like if there's any changes in your hips, like tension, and it's okay if you move around a little bit slowly, not fast. There's a tendency for people to move fast, 
and fascia doesn't work that way. So you always move slow. And now we're gonna breathe in, again, piercing the lips and breathing, drawing the air into the lungs like you're breathing into a balloon. Again, again, and exhale slowly, letting the air fall out of you rather than blow out of you. Okay, wiggle your toes a little bit, feel your feet, feel your knees, wiggle your hips, loosen it up, turn a bit more to the right. Okay, breathe in again, 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 and exhale slowly. Again, feeling your feet. I'm always trying to adjust the, my feet to make sure that I get most of my feet on the ground and you're not going to at first, that's okay. So breathe in again. Again, again, and exhale slowly. Now we're gonna go six breaths into the nose and up to the mouth, finding a fixed spot over your left eye. So, so over your shoulder, focus on a spot on the wall or wherever you are. Deep breath into the nose and exhale to the mouth. And again, you're always trying to rotate the body a little bit more, trying to pull in the spinal pelvic block right here. And this is a constant uh, uh, adjustment. So pulling it in, turning a bit more, turning the head a bit more. And if you're taller, you're gonna notice a little bit more tension in through this area. If you're shorter, you're gonna have a bit more tension into this area and it's all okay. And you'll notice that the feet here, he's got his feet pretty close together, but like we said before, if this is the first time doing them and you have balance issues, you can actually spread it apart. And if you can't stand up, there's ways to do this sitting down, but those are other videos that we'll show you. So we're back in now, and so now what we're gonna do is come back to neutral, and we're turn our head slowly to the right. Again, slow is the, the operative word with fascia. Turning the body to the left, putting the tongue in the right cheek. Find that, that spot that's tighter. Hmm. For me, it's right there. Six breaths. Okay, pursing the lips, drawing air in. Again, again, and exhale slowly. Okay, let's uh, move your feet around, draw your, your focus to your feet, and then wiggle them a little bit. Your knees wiggle a little bit, your hips wiggle a little bit. It loosens everything up, turn a little bit more to your left, head a bit more to the right, Try and pull your belly button and your spinal pelvic lock in. And you'll see the difference. Watch my hips when I do this. This is where I'm at right now. And by pulling the belly button in, it pulls me up tight and lets me turn a bit more. So we're gonna breathe in uh, through the straw, uh, through the mouth like a straw with your lips first. Again, again, and exhale. Breathe in, again, again, and exhale. Now in through the nose and out through the mouth, we're gonna go six breaths. And as you do this, it's an easy in and a real easy out. So I feel uh, uh, releasing in my hips when I breathe out. Check your body and see what you feel. But I want you to focus your attention on your body, on any changes you may feel. And as you do fascial maneuvers more, you'll notice the subtle changes. At first, sometimes we don't notice the changes to the end and that's okay. Okay, good. Now we're gonna unwind slowly. And again, slowly, step out and I'm gonna adjust yourself. I got a little adjustment in my neck. I feel pretty good in my hips. I'm starting to get quiet in my head. So we're gonna walk around. Again, this is our three minute walk. Um, so I feel quieter. The room looks a little bit brighter to me. Does it change for you? Do you see anything different? Jason, what are you noticing? Higher definition? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I see higher definition. Cynthia? Uh, my 
head cleared up and things are brighter. Things are brighter. You look brighter. Yeah, my lungs opened up too. My lungs opened up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My lungs opened up and uh, my nasal passages opened up. So again, what we're doing is we're working with fascia and fascia is the entire body. Um, none of the bones in your body actually touch except for your rib cage and your ears. Bones are not structure. I learned that bones are structure and, and when I started off Human Garage, there was structural alignment, but we found out that structural alignment wasn't a good determination of success. Sometimes people have bad posture or structure and they feel good. Sometimes people like me had good posture and I felt bad. So structure is not it. What we, we've determined that flow is the best way to be. And your body's always adapting and always moving. Okay, guys? So you're ready? We're going to go into our third maneuver. This is called anti-gravity. And we, we call it anti-gravity. Jason called it anti-gravity first. Is because anti-gravity just seems to make us want to float. What we're going to start off with is a demonstration, just so you can see. This one's a little tough uh, because you're going to be heading down uh, and looking at the ground. So we're going to demo it first and then we're going to do it together. Jason, why don't you come in and we'll demo this. Okay, so we're going to do a spinal pelvic lock. Again, pulling in the belly button, pulling up the uh, anus muscle, pulling in the bladder. Okay, now what we're going to do is put our hands together. And when we put our hands together, we want the thumbs to touch. Now, some of you are not going to be able to do this. Some of you are just going to do this. But if we can get the thumbs to touch, and if you can't, that's okay, but the preferred is to get the thumbs to touch. We're gonna to put it all over the head here. And when you come around to the back, you're gonna see something here. Um, you're gonna see that he's actually not pulling the neck, he's pulling the skin up. So let it, let it go down again, and then pull the skin up. What we're doing is pulling the fascia up here, okay? So what he's gonna do is he's going to roll his eyes up front to the top, and turn the head up top. Again, tightening the spinal pelvic block. We're gonna take three breaths here through the nose and three through the mouth, okay? Then what we're gonna do is bring the elbows together and slowly bring your chin to your chest coming down. And again, at this point, we're gonna address the spinal pelvic block and what you're gonna feel is a transfer of force into the head, stretching the fascia around the head and neck. Okay, we're gonna then do what looks like a swimming. If you're a front crawler, and swimming, and we're gonna look up each way, taking a breath. So up, come all the way down, and come up to the other side, breathe in and up. Okay, good, and uh, this is, again, just a demo. We're gonna start the squat, and so you're gonna soften your knees, and you're gonna put your bum out, and the bum goes way back, and you're over the top of the balls of the feet. So a lot of the mistake is, is trying to squat backwards like a squat, but this is more like a skier, and you can see the distance here, he's sticking the bum out and the head, and we're literally pulling the bum and the head away from each other, and he's gonna look up. As he looks up, it increases the tension along the spine, and then we're gonna do the, uh, the breath like a swimmer again, so coming up to the right, and then all the way down up to the left. Now then, from this position, we're gonna go to the third uh, spot, which is down squatting, and if you can't squat, you're going to come back up into the second position like this. And in this position, you are going to try and get the elbows in between the knees. And not everybody can do this. And if you can't do this squat, don't try. I would rather that you either do this or come back up to here and do this. It's not about forcing. It's about getting the body. And then we're going to tighten it. And we're just going to breathe in through the mouth and the nose. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have the start to stand up. And the bum's going to come up first with the head down. Stretching the legs. It's going to be a little hard for some people and slowly coming back up. And as you come back up, you're keeping pressure on, on the fascia on the neck down and then returning all the way to the up position. Okay, great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do that together. Okay. That's the hardest one. We want to see it first. Um, and again, this one might take a few tries to get it, but let's pull our spinal pelvic block in and pull up our, our glutes and our bladder. Take our hands, put them together, thumbs touching. Again, behind the head, just like we did before, and pulling the fascia on the neck up. So stretching the fascia up. Okay, I'm gonna do my spinal pelvic lock again, tightening up. I'm gonna turn my eyes up first. Hold that for a second. Turn my head up after my eyes, getting a good stretch in the rib cage. And we're gonna purse, our, so we're gonna take three breaths in through the mouth. So. 
Letting it fall out. And then through the nose. And you'll notice that as you breathe through the nose, it, it creates different stretching in the fascia up into the shoulders and the elbows a little bit more. Okay, now slowly bringing your chin to your chest. And as you do this, we get down. And what I want you to do is again, pull your belly button into the center, pull up your root, uh, your spinal pelvic block. Okay, we're gonna take a big breath in through our mouth, so. And then we're gonna turn up to the right. And then exhale that breath down. Do it again, big breath. Up to the left. And exhale down. Now two more times, a little bit more fluid. Up to the right, exhale down. Breathe in. Up to the left, exhale down. Breathe in. Up to the right, and exhale down. Breathe in. Up to the left, and exhale down. Now pulling the spinal pelvic block, the belly button in, pull up the anus and the bladder again. Now what we do, make sure you're a good shoulder width apart, and we're gonna soften the knees, stick the bum out backwards, and we're gonna to start to squat over the balls of our feet. And when we get to 90 degrees as a goal, or as far as you can go, you look upwards and you pull your bum, sitting basically away from your neck. Okay, now we're gonna breathe in. Up to the right. And exhale down. Breathe in. Up to the left. And exhale down. Breathe in. Up to the right. Exhale down, breathe in, up to the left, and exhale down, breathe in, up to the right, and exhale down, breathe in, up to the left, and exhale down. Now remember this spot, if you can't go into a squat, you're going to start to stand back up. But if you can, we're going to go into a squat with the elbows between the knees. Once you get here, take a second. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel your knees, there's gonna be a little bit of tension in your lower back, stretching. Pull in your spinal pelvic block again. And we're gonna breathe through the mouth three and through the nose. And exhale. And notice how the breath is coming in. Really heavy. Now through the nose. As you go through the nose, you're going to feel it more in your upper back and your shoulders. Okay, now we're going to go to the final position. We're going to stand up and bump first. Head down and slowly bring the head back up with the neck down. All the way to the final position. Look up and relax. Holy smokes, yeah. Give yourself a moment here. Yeah. This one, uh, hey, you're gonna need a minute, so just give yourself a moment before you move around. You're gonna feel a little spacey. It's quite often that people will feel uh, uh, a little bit drunk or a little bit dizzy, so just give yourself a second. Because what we're doing is decompressing the entire spinal region with all the nerves that feed almost every aspect of the body. And we're using breath to expand the rib cage and the hips. So super powerful. And that's why we're breathing through our mouth. It's for pressure. This uh, uh, breathing through the nose is normal, but breathing through the mouth in these movements and maneuvers cause pressure. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, ready guys? Let's walk around. Whew. So right away, I have like all kinds of blood rushing to my head. And I, I noticed that as I'm walking, um, my feet have a better heel to toe roll. So check your feet and see what you feel. And my knees feel looser. Jay, anything for you? My knees, my left shoulder drop now. And my right ear is a little plugged. But next to the circuit. That's yeah. funny, my right ear just plugged with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Cynthia. I had a release in my low back. Releasing your low back. And my jaw is starting to release right now as I'm walking. And I want you to, as you walk, to move your shoulders around, move your head around. 
And what you're doing is you're letting the fascia integrate because the fascia has been restricted as we grow up. And we, the movements that we do to maintain and the stretching that I was doing before was actually causing more fascial restriction. And I didn't know that. I was stretching my muscles and I was making it worse. So um, from this point on, what I want you to do is center yourself, feel your feet again. I want you to feel your hips, feel how they're loose, feel your shoulders, and feel your neck. I want you to check these points again, see how you feel. Mine are loose on both sides. My head has a lot more range of motion. And these three movements are the foundation of all of the fascial maneuvers. And we suggest that you do them right in the morning when you get up. It takes about 12 to 13 minutes and right before you go to sleep. And if you do it in the morning when you wake up, the natural tendency when you wake up is to stretch. And what it does is it's, it's stretching all the fascia, getting everything that was uh, tight in the night as your body was repairing opened up. And at the nighttime, what we do is we move through the day, we create little bits of stress, and this lowers the stress by 75 to 90% in your body, and it helps you drop into sleep faster and recover faster. So it's the best recovery tool. And these are the foundation of all the movements, and we're gonna go through seven other movements, but those seven movements are about how you move through your life, and this is to balance you so that you feel good. And when you're doing fascial maneuvers, you can do them anywhere. You can do them in a, I'm in a, in a grocery store, I'll just do them like this, and nobody knows any different. I'll do them in my car while I'm waiting, so any time that you do it, you're just counter-rotating, turning the head, and reducing your stress. And this is, uh, again, the best thing that you can do on a daily basis. These are the three essential fascial maneuvers that have fundamentally changed my life. I do them in the morning and at night. In the morning, because when I get up, I'm tight and twisted and I want to stretch, so I do the fascial maneuvers to get everything flowing so I can move through my day with less restriction. At nighttime, super important. I do them to bring the stress levels in my body down, preparing for my nighttime routine so I can drop into sleep and get into REM sleep and my body recovers better. These three maneuvers have changed my life and I'm waiting to see how they change yours. The next maneuver, swinger. Just want you to move your hips, move your arms, uh, move your neck around. And this is just a good way to integrate everything because your body, after you do fascial maneuvers, uh, especially the first three, it's trying to figure out where everything belongs, where everything sits. So let's get going. Uh, we're going to start off with our spinal pelvic lock, as always. Bringing up the uh, root lock or the anus and the pelvic muscles, bring them in tight. Pull everything inside of you. And again, we're going to keep correcting that, okay? So starting off with this, we're going to soften our knees and then we're going to stick our bum out towards the wall and it moves the body down forward and the hands are going to hang in front of you and you're going to put them down and bend until your fingertips actually touch your knees. Now this is called an athletic position. So we're going to take our right hand, put it on top of our left shoulder and it's really this there for placeholding you'll have to grab. Take your left hand and you're going to pull the skin on the fascia, on the, on the tricep area down and lock it on the elbow. You're going to turn your head to the right. You're going to pull your body around to the left. Good stretch. Be slow here. And you'll see my hip dropping out in the back. And then you're going to start to squat. And you see my right knee forward and my left knee back. And what I'm doing is I'm building tension between my right knee and my left knee, and we're gonna breathe six times. Now I'm gonna show you what they're doing. In this particular situation here, you'll see how this shoulder and this hip is back forward, and see how the knee is pushed forward here. This is creating contrast and space and stretching between here, and this is for the hip muscles, and for the, bu uh, the bone, and all the glutes, and everything around there. And when women do this, you're going to see slightly different. Women tend to have, have larger hips and they're going to push out a little bit further over here and you see how the contrast, the hip is higher usually on this side. But we want to create that stretch in the fascia between this leg and this arm and it's wrapping all around here and going all the way down into the knee. Okay, so let's uh, get ready and do the second part. Again, always, you're going to hear us say this over and over again, spinal pelvic lock. Pull it all up. Knees soft, buttocks out, 
leaning forward, uh, fingers touching the knees, left hand on right shoulder, right hand pulling the skin slightly down to the elbow, getting a good stretch, and you, you have a good stretch, a good hold here, and then turn your head to the left, turn your body all the way to the right, get a good pull, and don't go too fast, hold it there, then squat. And again, naturally you'll see the hip and the knees are different here, and you're breathing through your mouth, six breaths. Each breath, I feel I drop a little bit deeper. Come on. <clears throat> so for me, quiet in my head, how do you feel? That's the most important part. And instantaneously, my shoulders and my hips, I got movement. Jason, lightheaded. <clears throat> my arms feel loose. Cynthia? Uh, my feet feel pretty grounded on the floor. Yeah, grounded and I feel flexible. So scan your feet, scan your knees, scan your hips. Get a little bit of hippie action there. And <clears throat> again, I just want you to move around, feel your body. And the body likes flow. It likes this type of movements. And when you move like this, the body is getting all the joints and you notice that the head is moving like opposite of the shoulders. And that's really the design of the fascial maneuvers. It's called counter rotation, which actually comes from a fetal position. And we're going to talk more about this in some of the education programs that we have. The next one's called pullover. And this one uh, feels really good. Works on my lower back. Uh, I've always had lower back issues and hip issues my entire life. Um, I have a long torso and that makes, that makes my lower back and my hips sore. Some people have short torsos and then you get, you get real tension in, in the uh, upper back area. But each and every one of us is different, but this one is one of my favorites. So let's go shoulder width again, <clears throat> spinal pelvic lock, bringing everything up inside. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take our right hand and we're going to put it on our left shoulder. This one's a little different. I'm going to show you here. We put the hand over the shoulder and like pull your shirt till you can't pull it anymore. So you're pulling it over and it locks it. And that's pinning the fascia. And we're going to learn a lot about that in the future. Left hand, take it to the rib cage over here and you pull it. So basically you're pulling this way and that creates a tension pattern and you're wrapping a rib cage and you're turning your head to the left. <clears throat> now this one here, you're going to lift your shoulder. It's a little awkward at first and try and lift the shoulder. Then we're going to squat straight down. So with the body up and you feel the tension, we we'll lift the shoulder a little further. Okay. Hold it there. Pull it around and over just a little bit. Hold it right there. You'll feel the tension going around into the back and into the legs and then move that pull all the way to the right knee. And you can even rest your, your elbow on your left elbow on your right knee. And you start to breathe and keep your head turned way over deep and the hips out and breathe through your mouth. Six breaths. Push the bum up further if you can. Roll around a bit further if you can. Okay, good. Uh, that one. Whew. Need a minute to recover from that one. Uh, that's uh, removing all the tension of the meridians up around the rib cage. Because when we breathe, we have to expand our rib cage. And the more tension, fascial tension from the organs, meridians like large intestine through there, and lungs and bladder, it constricts it and it makes it harder to breathe. So that one always gets my breath out. Okay. Now, because this one's so powerful, we're going to walk around first before we do the second maneuver. Um, and extremely, my entire left side feels really loose, and my right side feels like uh, it feels it feels like restricted. Mm -hmm. So I feel very lopsided here. Jason? Yeah, same. Yeah. yeah. Cynthia? That one made me a little lightheaded. A little lightheaded. Feels like my right shoulder is like touching my ear. 
and my left one is like on the floor. Yes, that's exactly. So the question again is, what do you feel like? And each and every one of you are going to feel slightly different. And that's important that it, there's, no, there's no one way to feel and there's no one way to do it. We're giving you the basic formula for moving it, but at the end of it, you have to feel it. And, and you're going to develop your practice as you go. If this is your first time, you know, just take a few minutes, feel it. And, and as you move through the maneuvers, they're going to change because your body changes. Bodies are not static. There's no fixed point. They're always in motion, always moving. And that's important to recognize and to, ex to acknowledge your body and accept that it is moving. Okay, get ready for the second one. Okay, shoulder width again, spinal pelvic lock, bring it in, bring up the anus and the, and the bladder, pulling up tight. And what we're going to do is take our left hand over top of the shoulder, pulling the shoulder over again, like we did last time. Take the right hand, pulling the, the fascia on the rib cage and getting a good lock, turning your head to the right and lifting as high as you can. This one's a little tighter for me because my right side's tighter. And then we're going to do that squat with the, with the body upwards as much as we can. Okay, lift again. And I feel a lot of tension in my lower back of rib ribcage. Pull over a little bit. Hold it right there. Yeah, let the body stretch. Let the fascia stretch into it. Then move all the way to the left knee. Make sure that you're looking over your right shoulder. And drop that hip back and breathe. I feel a lot of tension inside the left hip and the left adductor area on the inside of the leg. Come on up. Whoa, okay, that one's gonna make me a lot my head. <laughs> Most people are gonna feel it different from side to side. That one's got me spitting. <laughs> so uh, my left. Uh, right side dropped, so uh, I had the same thing as Jason before, where it felt like my shoulder, uh, my right shoulder is in my ear, my left one was loose, but now it's starting to loosen up. And I'm feeling more balanced, but I'm still feeling a little tightness in my foot, which is normal as we walk it out. Jason, what's happening over here? The left side of my head feels relaxed, and I feel a little bit high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like <laughs> relaxed, Woo! like really relaxed. Yeah. My hip was tight this morning. Do I look as high as I feel? Ooh. Get high on your own supply. High on your own supply. Okay, guys, this is a fantastic one. Let's uh, move the body around again. Just move the body around and let it integrate. It opens up the hips and the shoulder joints and lets the neck and the jaw and the feet and the ankles and the knees coordinate with those two. We're always moving counter this one and this one and the head. It's in patterns, okay? Again, there's a lot more education as you get into this. These are the basics, and once you learn the basic movements, you're gonna to learn to adapt them yourself. Everybody's different, and we need different movements for every person, but it's the same formula for each and every one. This one's a little tough um, from a technical standpoint, uh, but you'll get through it. The first time's a little tricky, so spinal pelvic lock, okay? This move is called pretzel squat, okay? So final spinal pelvic lock. Turn your left foot um, into the right foot. And what I want you to do is I want you to step up to the left. And you want to put three feet. You want to be rid so that you can lock that knee. The tendency is in like in yoga to pose like warrior. This is not a warrior pose, trust me. And your other foot, your back foot is is, is still facing this direction, but you want to lock the knee. Because we want the, the ankle and we want the hip to pivot, but we want the knee to be solid. So as we do this, we're gonna turn our body, spinal pelvic lock again, turn our body all the way to the right. Now you're gonna feel tension in your, in your left quad area, that's normal, left glute. And what you're gonna do is take your right hand and put it forward. Take your left hand and put it on your bum. And right on your bum cheek there. And what you're going to do is you're going to push the bum cheek right out. So you're moving your hips sideways and it makes you want to fall into the center. Okay. Once you're here, you're going to take your right hand, put it on your left shoulder and your left hand is going to go behind you, palm facing away as high as you feel comfortable and turn your head backwards 
over your right shoulder. Now, with both legs, you're gonna squat. And you're gonna put that, those hips down deep. And as you squat, you're gonna start to breathe. Six breaths. And as you're breathing these six breaths, you can push into the leg a little bit more, causing more tension, but keep those hips low. Okay, now we're gonna switch arms, rotating the arms. Same thing is left hand on the shoulder and looking forward, right hand behind you. And squat, get deep, six more breaths. Opening up the hips, a lot of tension in the hips, a lot of tension in the hamstring area, quad area, and come on up. Okay. If you spent your life in gyms working out, you're gonna be almost passing out after this one. Cardiovascular function, we used to think was heart rate, but it's not actually, it's blood volume through the lungs, and that's what we've discovered. And so you get the good cardiovascular and a good <clears throat> metabolic function here, breathing hard, respirating, so we're gonna walk, okay? This one always requires <clears throat> A good walk. Jay, how are you feeling? I can't even talk to you. <laughs> I'm out of breath. My right leg feels longer than my left. So I'm still trying to integrate that. Wow, it's interesting. My it's left like... leg feels longer than my right. Oh. That's a weird one. Cynthia? Uh, I feel loose in my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I notice a lot of uh, my jaw wants to move. Wiggling my jaw around. <clears throat> Let's turn around the other way, because this one is, wow, <laughs> it's caught me. Oh, that feels better. So again, if you're walking, we're walking in a circle for the camera, but when I do this, normally, if I have the runway, I just walk back and forth. Back and forth in a straight line gives you better awareness of the contrast, okay. Still a little bit out of breath, and that's normal. It's funny because when, you're, when we're running, we're taught that the heart rate is what drives the metabolic function. But there's certain people that can run on a, on, a tre on a treadmill for like 30 minutes before their heart rate even goes up. But you do this one pretzel squat, and boom, everything is blood's flowing, I'm sweating, I got sweat down my back, everything like that in just seconds, okay? So, spinal pelvic lock, pulling it tight, right foot, teed to the left foot, Stepping on out, and again about three feet or so. You want to make sure that that, that that knee is locked and the pivot is the hip. Okay? Pulling in the spinal pelvic lock again. Turn your body to the right. Lift your left hand up. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to put your left hand on your shoulder. You're going to put your right hand on your glute. Sorry. Can we cut that in or do the whole thing over? Uh, yeah, you can start the, just the, the audio over. Okay, tur uh, turning, um, turn your body to the, uh, to the right. You put your left hand forward, put your right hand on your glute, push your glute towards the wall behind you, falling into the center, creating a massive stretch in the hamstring and glute area on the right side. Take your right hand, put it on your left shoulder, and your left hand, um, with the palm up as high as you're comfortable, turn your head backwards over your left shoulder, and then squat deep. Both legs are squatting, both knees are bending, and you're looking at six breaths. So as I'm breathing, I feel a lot of, a lot of tension and flow through my right hamstring area. Okay, now switching arms, and turn your gaze forward over your right side, Three, four, get those hips low, five, six. Whew. Okay, that one. <laughs> Jello legs, jello legs, feel like I want to pass out. Whew, that's amazing. You know what? This stuff never gets old. It's like, there's not a static point. There's not a point in which I've ever gotten to sit that easy because each and every time, the fascia is moving fluid through it. 
So it's not about a challenge point like muscles, like I can strength and do something. The fascia is moving fluid, so I feel it each and every time. It's like it never goes away. It gets slightly, I get deeper, a little bit more breath, but the body, every time I'm challenged, just by these 10 basic maneuvers, never really change. And if you're not being challenged by it, uh, we want to look at it a little bit deeper because if you're doing the maneuvers right and you're doing them in sequence, you're going to feel this. Okay. Some people ask, well, why well, don't you move your body again? And while we're doing this, some people uh, ask, why six breaths? There's 10 inside organs of fashion the skin, so it's 12 organs. Six yin, six yang. So six is the minimum effective dose. You can actually go nine breaths, 12 breaths, however you want. You can hold your breath and change your breath. But the minimum dose, minimum effective dose is six breaths. So the next one we're gonna do is called um, peekaboo. Now this one is a tough one. And as we were rolling these out before, we found that people had the most challenge. First of all, fascia is not, is not bilateral. So it's different on this side than different this side. I have one shoulder higher, one arm bigger. The body's built that way. So trying to do things in complete symmetry just doesn't make sense. We, we want to honor the natural flow of the body. So fascia wraps around the head like this. So we're gonna take our right hand and we're gonna place it right at the back of the neck on the shoulder trap area. And you're gonna to start to pull the skin away. So towards the right side. So literally pulling the elbow this way. And you're gonna bring the elbow around. And what you're doing is you're actually locking the fascia, pinning it. So it's about getting it sticky in here. Then your second hand, what you're gonna do is you're gonna place it over your head like this. And what we're doing is we're gonna squeeze and twist the skin and we're gonna move. And as we move, the actual bones are going to move inside the fascia. So we're, we're actually twisting, squeezing and twisting. So let's do it now. Squeeze, twist, and get a good tension there first. So, and then you're gonna go down to the left knee and you're pushing up with this hand. And turning back, looking back as far as you can to the left side. Three, two more breaths. Five, six, four. Okay. That one, again, a little lightheaded. Oh, my ear, my, my ear opened up. Your ear opened up and my sinus opened up. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like warm, my like blood flow. Mm. Cynthia. Yeah, my sinus is opened up. Yeah. yeah, all through my face, my head. Yeah, my ear, my right ear. I don't know what's with the right ear today, guys. <laughs> and mine completely opened up after that. Okay. And it, People want to get, you know, they, they think about the body. The body's in three areas. One area, two areas, and three. Each one of these areas affect the other one, and it's about pressure and pressure regulation. As you start to learn more about fascia through our programs, you'll learn how pressure works and moves in the body. I used to think that we were mechanical, and that would be like a string going from here to here, winding it up. That's mechanics. But blood rushes into a muscle, into a sheath of fascia and swirls. That's actually hydraulics. And about seven years ago, we discovered that the body was actually hydraulic and pressure sensitive and moving pressure around. Then things started to make sense. And you're going to learn this, but more importantly, you're going to feel it at some point. And if you don't feel it all right now, that's okay. You will shortly, I promise you. So the next one's called antlers. So we're going to pull our spinal pelvic lock in. Okay, we're going to take our right hand and we're going to place the palm right on the temple area, but with a hand backwards. So right behind the eye, right on the temple, right in that little, that little divot spot. Take your left hand forward, palm right in that same spot facing forward. And what you're doing is squeeze the head Hold it there, squeeze it for a second, then turn 
You actually you'll see, watch, I'll do it again for the camera. Watch my face. My face actually changes. Pulling the skin around. And once you get up top, you grab the head for balance. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn all the way to the left. Keeping your hips neutral into the front and breathe. Turn all the way slowly to the right. And you're still twisting and you're still creating pressure. Keep the hips up front. This one's a little harder for me. Come up to neutral, look up. Breathe. Slowly bring your chin to your chest, look down. Breathe. We're gonna do the swimmer. Look up to the right. Breathe. I usually do three breaths here. Look up to the left. A lot more tension this way for me. Now come back to center, soften your knees, stick your bum out. Down to the skier position, do it again, right, all the way to the left, and come on. So for me, I got really quiet. It's almost like the room got quieter, and I know the room didn't get quieter, so that's me. My neck was cracking yeah, crazy. Mine too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so. I used to go to my own chiropractors and before that chiropractors for adjustments. And what I found is that as I do my own fascial maneuvers, the body just naturally adjusts itself. And that's what we want. We want the natural adjustment, the one where, where you're moving, not the one where you twist your neck, but just when you're moving and it adjusts, that means that the pressure that the, that the bones are holding comes into balance, but the fascia doesn't. When your body corrects itself, you get a win. When I have to correct the body, there's a little bit of trauma, micro trauma to the body. So every time I can get it through a fashion maneuver, that's great. And you can still be adjusted, but this is going to get you to a point, for me anyways, where after um, 30 years of being cared for by practitioners and chiropractors and doctors and acupuncturists, um, now I actually am caring for myself. And the majority of the stuff that I need, I got through myself in the last 18 months. I've had no practitioners touch my body, which is very, very cool because now the healing's back in my hand. Okay, so we've got a couple more maneuvers to do and we'll be finished. The next one is for the ears. Ears, super important. Ears tie directly to the limbic system of the brain. Smallest bone in the body. It's one of the areas where the bones touch. Ears develop in the first trimester and never stop working. It's one of those things. That's why we get big ears as we get older. And the ears are always taking the vibration, bringing it in. And it's literally powering the brain and powering your organs, which is cool. So the very, very first one that we're gonna do with the ears is you take your left hand, you're gonna stretch it way over and grab the ear lobe at the top, or the ear at the top. And right hand, you're gonna grab the lobe. Now this is gonna hurt a little bit the first time, that's okay. Pull it apart, okay? and hold it, so pull and hold. Don't like move it around, pull and hold, let the body adapt. Then pull it off your ear, it's gonna hurt a little bit in your jaw maybe, I can feel it there. And then twist it a bit, and then hold. Then what I want you to do is just to move your hips around in any way and your head around, and what that will do is it'll change it. And so there's no right or wrong, just do what feels good. Again, it hurts the first time, but whoa. Okay, now for me, my whole right of the neck, even though we do this all the time, my right of my neck opened up. What's happening with you, Jim? My left arm opened up. <laughs> yeah, like a lot. Yeah, pressure from here affects this side of the body. You definitely it? felt it in my neck. So let's do it the other side, let's see what happens. Oh, my jaw too, ah, that's feeling good. Right hand over, grab the top of the ear, pull the lobe, pull that sucker and just hold it there Stretch it apart. Oh wow, I'm getting good stretch this time. It's been a while. Okay, then pull it off the ear, like you're literally pulling this direction, pulling it away. No one's pulled the ear off so far, so I think you're safe. Then you're gonna twist it a little bit. This one's good for me. Then I'm gonna start to squat, move my head around. Whatever works for you, find your spot. I find a bit of tension right when I do this. 
and I squat into it. So you're looking for tension, and when you find a tension spot, you literally just stop. Okay, now I'm gonna walk. Now for me, automatically, my hips loosened up, my, my quads, my glutes are tighter. See what you feel. Jason? Uh, the room looks very high def. Yeah. High def and bright. Yeah. yeah. So this? Uh, loosened up my jaw. <laughs> loosened up the jaw? Yeah. Okay. We're going to give you one more maneuver for the year. This is my favorite one. I do this all the time. Ears I do all the time. So you're going to take your thumb. If you have nails, you don't want to do this with nails. You want to put a tissue or a cloth. You can use a cloth to it. So we're going to take our thumb. We're going to put it in just like we're twisting fabric and twisting it up. We're going to push it into the ear. We'll do the right side first and you can watch right in the ear, pushing in and turning the skin just to get a grip and turn it backwards. Okay. Then what you're going to do is open and close your jaw. And then we're going to do the same thing with the left side, but we're going to turn forward this time. Now you're not going to be able to hear me. So you have to watch. Okay. I'm going to go up. Gonna go down. Gonna go to the right. To the left. Okay, squatting to the right. To the left. Okay. For me, uh, and most people will say they feel more engagement in their hips. And the weird one is why do the ears affect the hips? This is part of the thing where we were doing these type of treatments on the ears years ago, but we didn't really understand how fascia worked. We used to think of the body as a bunch of separate components, but all those components live inside this, this balloon of fascia. And, and when we pull here, it affects somewhere down there. And so you're going to see and feel things that you've never felt before. And when you do share that with other people, it helps them understand. So last one is called getting cheeky. I think Jason named this one. We're going to take uh, two fingers here and we're going to take your right hand pointing backwards and we're going to go right into the cheekbone and the and the jawbone, the, the TMJ area, and get a little lump there, feel it there, and the, the left hand going forward, same spot. And all we're gonna do is twist. And we're gonna hold that. Breathe. I'm moving to three fingers. For me, I like three fingers, I got a big mouth. I'm gonna turn my head to the right. And I'm gonna hold it there. Turn it to the left. Hold it there. Look up. Look down. Go right. And I'm just moving fluidly to the left. Squatting a little bit. Again, there's no right or wrong here. There you go. And each and every one of you could have a slightly different experience. I loosen my jaw. And for, the, for me, I can already feel my ankles more flexible. Either of you guys feel that? My throat changed. My throat, yeah. <clears> throat> my, yeah, my voice just got deeper. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so it affects the vocal cords for singers. If you're a singer, it really, really affects the vocal cords these last couple of maneuvers. Okay, guys. That was a great session. That was good. Yeah. <clears throat> The entire 10 fascial maneuvers have changed our lives. And that's why we've dedicated our lives to helping people understand how to do them and share them. Well, after doing a class like that, I mean, I feel completely revived. Um, and I do this myself personally about four times a week. I don't do it every day. 
And I want you to, after you do this, to feel how you feel. And as you move forward and things change for you, share your experiences, help the community grow and, and share this with friends, family, and everybody else.